Hey guys, this is Grant from the Brutally Delicious Podcast, coming at you today with a comic book review. Now, comic books aren't normally my thing, and don't get me wrong, I've read a good few of them in my time, but my reason for reviewing this isn't because I'm necessarily a comic book fan. Anybody that's listened to my reviews before know that I've got strong views on this. And in recent years, comic book culture has become almost as toxic as rock music when it comes to gatekeeping. We know the type that are metal gatekeepers. Comic book gatekeepers, they're not far off. You know what I mean? Little basement dwellers, you know, surrounded by the collection. You know, probably not allowed near a school. And the kind of people that will violently react if you suggest the similarities between Batman and Iron Man. So that's why I'm reviewing this. To me, comics are art. They're not a product released purely for fan base's appeasement, so I figured the world might appreciate an unbiased review from somebody that regards what I'm looking at as literature and not a product. So what I'm coming with, <coughs> coming with is a new release from Torpedo Comics. Um, it's setting the scene for what is likely going to be a lengthy series revolving around a samurai named Shinzu, which is where it gets its title, Dead Samurai. So it's set in the late 16th century feudal Japan. Um, it sets its foundation for a samurai warrior battling evil forces that appear, on early indication, to be some form of undead zombie-type enemy. From the synopsis, it looks like the base in this zombie outbreak on the evolution of the leprosy virus. Um... Looking very, very similar to Mandalorian, Last of Us, that kind of thing, with the lone warrior escorting the vulnerable child to safety. The one thing that's got me wondering a little bit about this before we move forward is how they're going to evolve the virus in it, because it's based on leprosy, which is a bacteria. Um, and in the vast majority of cases, zombie infections come from viral places, with the exception maybe of The Last of Us. So it's going to be interesting to see how they evolve it based on the different pathogens, if that is indeed what they go for. So, the story structure that we're looking at, I already mentioned The Mandalorian, I already mentioned The Last of Us, you know, th this story of the hero and the vulnerable tag-along is as old as storytelling itself, so realistically this is going to be the dialogue and the art style that, that is going to set this apart from other... You know, I've mentioned the other ones, you know, it's the hero's journey, it's a little bit of Save the Cat style story arcs, let's say, the actual basis of the story has been done a hundred times before. With it being the first episode of a new series, there was really little more going on in this first comic than establishing your backstory and the motivations for the series moving forward. Thematically... The writers haven't held back on both gore and heartbreak, um, setting, again, that relatively common theme of violence and revenge as the hero's primary motivation, but it's done well, you know what I mean? The heartbreak, it gets to you a little bit, I'm going to go on to that in a second. So artistically speaking, what I'm looking at is well drawn. Um, as far as imagery is concerned, it's got very, very good contrast in both the way that the backgrounds are drawn and the way the characters are drawn, um, establishing the differences between good and evil. And even in the close ups, you know, character body language and facial expressions and what have you are quite detailed to indicate the tone with which somebody would be speaking. The dialogue, as I mentioned before, you know, the, the heartbreak in this early episode um is done quite well it's engaging and well written um and it's clearly written to invoke empathy uh for the coming polite that you're going to see out of the, the main characters you'll notice i'm kind of dodging anything specific here because ultimately it's episode one there's still spoilers it might be somewhat formulaic but all storytelling is formulaic at the end of the day you know even the most modern horror films that you see these days are just the story of theseus and the minotaur it's just that the minotaur happens to be jason or freddy or whoever and this kind of structure goes right back to thousands of years bc as well so we're setting here. This is quite an interesting setting, especially with what's going on at the moment, because it is feudal Japan. And feudal Japan has been in and out of media quite a bit in recent years. Um, you know, 2010 saw the release of Predators. And let's face it, the only thing that saved that movie is the Yakuza samurai fight with the Predator. And ever since then, there's been this stuff kicking about online about them wanting a new Predator movie set in feudal Japan with a disgraced samurai having to hunt down the Predator because he couldn't, um, you know, save his lord and what have you. It's been going for quite a while. And on top of that, we've also got Assassin's Creed 
taking us to Feudal Japan in the next instalment. So it is going to be very interesting to see where this storyline goes on what is, in essence, the samurai walking dead. All in all, what I've read so far, even not coming from a comic book fan, I've quite liked what I've seen. Like I say, it's engaging. It invokes em empathy. It does have a very, very pretty art style to it. So here's hoping the writers take us somewhere a little bit different to where we've been before with this kind of structure. Whether they do it or not, or how they do it, remains to be seen after one episode. But for any comic book fans out there, this is going to be worth a look, okay? That's it from me. This is Grant from the Brutally Delicious Podcast, signing off. One Hit Thunder is a podcast where we both celebrate and have a good laugh about bands and artists that had just one hit that we all know. Each week, we're joined by a guest from the world of music or comedy to learn more than you ever thought you would about some songs that you can't forget. And we decide if they brought the One Hit Thunder or were nothing more than a One Hit Blunder. Look, if you listen to the show, you're probably going to laugh, and I guarantee you're going to crush next time the bar has music trivia. Tag Team, Jane Child, Meredith Brooks, Looking Glass, Sean Mullins, Eiffel 65, EMF, Crash Test Dummies, Crazy Town, Chumbawamba. We have hundreds of episodes in our back catalog and a new episode each week. So pass the duchy, make sure you're connected, and subscribe to One Hit Thunder wherever you get your pods.